Hello and welcome back. And that is right. It's time. Let's talk about the Synology DS923+. Plus. That's right. It is the new disk station 4 bay from Synology. We've talked about it a little bit in 2022. And finally, here we are. We're able to discuss this system. Now, this isn't it on the table. This is the DS920. So let's move that over there. And hopefully right now, we should have a lovely digital graphic there on the side of the screen to represent the 923. But we're going to have to keep this device here next to me because we ain't half going to make a lot of references to that 920 there next to me. Now, the DS923 is the latest generation of expandable disk station plus series from Synology. It is a device that a number of us have been sitting on the fence for for quite a while, wondering when it's arriving. And although it has arrived and a lot of people have finally gone, of course it was coming, I think it would be fair to say that a number of us have gone, wait, what? Wait, what? Because... The hardware, although we sort of saw this coming thanks to releases like the DS1522 Plus and the RS422 Plus in the last few months, the hardware architecture of the DS923 from Synology is going to split opinion. Now, before we go any further, you can probably hear a light hum in the background. At the time of recording this right now, I'm doing my power consumption video series that I'm testing, and I've got four NASes in this room running full 24-hour access. Now, when, if that video is already live, great stuff, but I've tried my best to remove the background hum as much as possible, but I apologize if that is coming through in the background. But let's go on forward. What's the big question immediately? Of course, it's the CPU. Now, the DS923 Plus is arriving with the AMD Ryzen embedded R1600 and I'm fairly certain that just saying that to you right now I run about 20 30 of you have just gone to kick the hell out of your kitchen I get it I get it it's not the CPU many of us were waiting for on this system previously in previous generations of the expandable DS9 series um deep space 9 DS9 series, they have arrived with either Pentium or Celeron processors from Intel. Always quad core, these processors have got one little tiny feature that we all love to hear integrated graphics, embedded graphics, transcoding engine. Call it what you will, it is a part of the CPU that is dedicated to. Uh, graphic handling. It does things with uh, graphical processes or multimedia in 1080p or 4K that will allow people to use these as, as their own multimedia server. Alternatives to Netflix, alternatives to Plex uh, 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 Prime Video and utilization in Plex Media Server, as well as that CPU being quite supported in things like virtualization with VMs being utilized in surveillance with multiple cameras. So when the DS923 Plus has arrived on the scene with that um, R1600 dual core 2.6 gigahertz a CPU that can be burst up to 3.1 gigahertz, a two core four thread processor, I think it is fair to say that a number of users are not exactly bowled over by at this time. Now, fair play, it is a good CPU. The R1600, as we've done with extensive testing in um, uh, with surveillance, uh, we did it with some virtual machine stuff, we did some bench testing with some WD Red Pro 22TB drives. That CPU does the job. Also, thanks to the four thread count uh, of that dual core processor, it does mean virtual CPUs for virtualization as well. Indeed, in terms of memory, it also means that this system supports ECC error correcting code memory there on board. That's one of the things on this video that for me isn't 100% clear right now about the memory, although there's lots of stuff online. I'm still going to stick a big old TBC on the end of it with the memory arriving at 4 gig by default that can be upgraded uh, to 32 gig. But at this time, I'm still not 100% convinced by that, thinking about maybe they'll go down the soldered route. So again, 4 gig upgradable to 32 gig. TBC there until you know more. Still nonetheless, ECC memory on this system in conjunction with that CPU means that this has got file throughput and file handling, and particularly Synology's range of applications for backups, file server, and hybrid cloud with third-party cloud, um, PAAS, SAAS, and their own C2 services in mind make this a quite a businessy NAS. I think arguably it moves it away from home, away from uh, prosumer and more towards small, medium business, Soho, that kind of thing. And as, uh, these users, they're gonna love hearing about this CPU because it provides a lot in terms of file transmission, file handling, and a lot of those processes that they care about. But I think it would be remiss for us not to mention that the 920 is certainly gonna do a better job of things like Plex Media Server 
than the DS923 Plus. Indeed, I've already done Plex Media Server comparisons between the 920 and the 1522, which had 8 gig of memory, mind, but still, CPU against CPU, when it came down to it, uh, that CPU, the R1600, uses more power in multimedia use and does not handle 4K. It doesn't. It can transcode it to a degree, but even then, it requires like ridiculous amount of hardware utilization compared with that of the Intel Celeron um, J4125 inside that 920 there released a little while ago. So that CPU certainly makes this system far more about um, file transmission and file handling and storage handling than it does about multimedia. But we have to stop banging a drum here because we can't rob this system. of. We can't say it's a bad system. We just can't because they are still presumably going to maintain the price point of the, 420, uh, the 920 where possible. It just means that Synology has clearly decided, or if not decided, they've watched the way the wind blows in the market and made two very clear jumps there. Number one, they can they think that the home NAS market is dividing itself quite clearly towards a value structure and the middle ground there that was once the prosumer is either moving towards building their own NAS or they're being more reliant on those third-party cloud services there and therefore they might have made the decision in their slight changes towards a business class model to opt for solutions further down the portfolio go more towards business more towards traditional file handling there the second thing that's worth bearing in mind now when it comes to the architecture of this system, that CPU, is we're seeing an increase in the number of solutions from Synology utilizing AMD. I remember, it wasn't even two, two and a half years ago, when Synology had no AMD solutions, to my mind. Then they integrated um, with the AMD Ryzen V1500B in the 1621 series, a CPU that we would see rolled out, replacing the Intel Atom before it. Earlier this year, in 2022, we saw uh, information start to emerge that Synology were going to um, move from an Intel platform on their SaaS solutions, the SA series, uh, and then with the SA6400 and 6200, uh, embrace the AMD EPYC uh, range of CPUs, tremendously powerful CPUs from AMD. So... There is a clear evidence there of Synology moving a lot of their systems over to AMD chips there. Now, it could be that they may be more affordable, but I reckon there's a decent uh, chance the reason they're going for this is Intel are still suffering quite significant hardware shortages and shortfall. And we've seen it time and time again. As processors have become less and less available from Intel, they've either forced refreshes very, very quickly, which client hardware providers hate, or they've driven up the price of that hardware as it's gone along. So you can see a lot of logic there between uh, behind Synology making that switch onto an AMD-led platform for these solutions to maintain that price point, but also to maintain availability, as uh, AMD are planned to support this CPU for a considerable length of time. Now, many of us might argue, why didn't they go for the Vega graphics version? That's right, there is a CPU in this same product family, in the R1600 family, that has integrated graphics, in, um, AMD Vega graphics. Why they didn't go for that? I'm not sure. Again, only Synology can really answer that there, but again, we're still wondering, kind of tapping our fingers on that one. But let's move away from that Intel, uh, uh, sorry, uh, from the internal hardware and talk a little bit about, about the ports and connections because we've got good news and we've got news. So let's go um, with news. Let's get it out of the way. Yes, it's one gigabit Ethernet. I said in 2020 um, when we did the uh, preview or the initial reveal of the DS920 that. When this had one gigabit Ethernet port, I was a little disappointed. I thought, come on, this must be the last time we're going to see that. One GBE, there's still no avoiding that is a little bit of a disappointment. This price point is still pretty good, um, particularly in comparison to the 918 and the improvements, the fact that they're hopefully keeping those prices as close together as possible. But one GBE is still something that I know a number of you were not hoping for and unfortunately have um, seen. And now two and a half years beyond that, we've seen 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, although it's by no means widespread, we've seen it arrive in the likes of um, ISP routes, we've seen it arrive on switches, we've seen it arrive on Synology's 
own router 2.5 gigabit ethernet there why are they integrating and why are they uh, adding that on there well first and foremost isps are now providing greater than gigabit internet connections very very commonly two we're seeing usb adapters that connect USB to 2.5 gigabit ethernet arriving on the scene for as little as $20 to upgrade your network connection um, to two and a half times what it already is. So it makes a lot of sense for 2.5 GBE, which is now arriving on systems at the same price as one GBE to arrive on these Synology hardware systems there. There are people out there who will go, ah, 2.5 GBE is a fad, get out of my face. And I get that. It, is nowhere near as widespread as one gigabit ethernet there and given that 10 gb is now only three to four times the cost it is easy to make the jump to 10 gbe but you still have to upgrade all of the devices in your hardware environment you don't have to there's backwards compatibility of course to a point but still nonetheless 10 gbe is still for many users outside of the remit of being upgradable to but moreover that their client hardware their laptops and in some cases pc and mac systems don't have the option to upgrade to 10 GBE. Maybe they don't have a Thunderbolt port that supports the adapter. Maybe they can't add a PCI Express slot and there are no USB to 10 GBE adapters in the market right now. So 2.5 GBE does have a purpose to allow greater bandwidth and you've got to talk future-proofing. When you're buying a solution, you want to know that you're buying something that's current now, but will also be pretty bloody current in terms of future-proofing in a few years from now. So I think it's at the very least that these systems should have 2.5 GBE for both being current now and the potential to be current in the future. Now, just because this doesn't have 2.5 GBE, it's not the end of the road, because what it does have is optional 10 GBE. Now, optional 10 GBE is delivered via that little adapter. The E10 G22 T1 adapter. It is a small adapter that's already become available and supported by a couple of different Synology systems that allows you to add 10 GBE. It's a PCIe Gen 3 times 2 connection there. So plenty of bandwidth over there on the PCIe connector and installs really, really easily. Now, I like that the DS923 Plus supports 10 GBE. It's something that we've been asking for for a long time on the four base systems to have greater than one GBE connectivity. So it's sort of in a way, or at least for some, will make up for the lack of 2.5 GBE. The fact it's an additional purchase for about 120 to 130 nicker, not overly fond of that, but still nonetheless, it's better to have that option there on board. Um, another thing I will add is some people may raise concerns that the DS923 being a four bay system won't be able to fully saturate a 10 GBE connection. And it's a decent enough concern. You know, if you're gonna go with mechanical hard drives, are they gonna give you the oomph to fully saturate 10 GBE? Of course, if you were you know, fully populating this device with SATA SSDs, done you're laughing and if you wanted to use the expansion slot on this um the e sata port on there on the rear that provides a connection to another five bay the dx517 then sure you can saturate it even though the expansion would be connected via e sata which is six gigabit so 600 megs limitation there you could still combine it with the raid of the drives inside the 923 and hit that 10 you know that 10 gbe that 1000 megs but what about a default state what if you only put drives inside just standard hard drives can you saturate a 10 gbe connection on this yes and no if you go for more enterprise grade hard drives like when i did my testing of the wd red pro 22 tbs on the 1522 same cpu and i only had four of them there i was able to fully saturate one gigabyte connection there in read i was able to hit 1.15 gigabytes um um, sequential read in terms of sequential write with varying different file formats in atto disk benchmark i managed to hit around eight to nine hundred megs but those are with pro series drives with standard class drives you're probably going to be looking at if you're looking at uh, n300s or you're going to look at wd red pluses or seagate iron wolf standard drives there you're probably going to hit about five to six hundred megs in each direction there now again there are ways and means to improve that based on the file format you go for as well as the connection you use and the fidelity and opening up the jumbo frames into you and stuff like that but you are going to be able to mostly if not fully saturate a 10 gigabit ethernet connection on this nas if you use the right kind of drives or at least halfway decent drives overall so don't worry too much about that there are usb ports on there 
but we're not overly fussed about those because Synology doesn't seem to really care that much about them either but they do of course give you support there on board of a few peripheral devices there and you can use things like UPSs although DSM 7.1 has lowered a few of the things you could do with the USB ports on there now also on this system there are the M2 NVMe slots on the base something we are used to we can it's been there on the 920 indeed it's been a feature since the DS918 and it allows you to install M2 NVMEs inside which can be used for caching. Now you can't use those for raw storage pools of course, but what you can use them for is to uh, use read caching and write caching on the system. So read caching is as smaller files are being more frequently accessed or, and this can really be more of a, a low latency responsiveness thing, those more commonly accessed small files are copied over to the cache. And therefore, when you are interacting with the system, it will pull the more frequently accessed smaller files and databases and more, uh, and that any data and index data and stuff from the cache, therefore making it a lot more responsive. Again, the differences with read cache are quite small depending on your setup, but they are there. With write caching, it can improve interaction with the NAS as files when they are write, written to the NAS will be written to the SSD portion and then move to the hard drives afterwards. It does help performance of uploads and writing to the system in general. It's just a real shame that you still can't use those M2 NVMEs for traditional raw storage pools because I think the performance benefits of NVMEs would definitely present huge advantages to certain kinds of uh, data when accessing these systems, be they for business, for VMs and more, or select applications within the Synology NAS system to run, much like an OS runs from a boot drive SSD, they could really benefit from those SSDs being used as raw storage pools there. I know a number of you in the comments are probably going to say you can use uh, certain hacks on GitHub to allow those NVMEs to be used as raw storage on Synology NASes, and you can, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's non-stable. Um, a patch from Synology could easily undo the work you're doing on there, and you may be running a risk of kind of dancing there on the edge of official support by the brand if something goes wrong, so bear that in mind. Um, in terms of hard drive compatibility, I'm going to go out on a limb because I still don't have a precise answer at the time of recording, but I think what we're going to have is not a dissimilar situation as what we saw to the 1522. We're going to see, obviously, their own Synology HAT5300 drives uh, take priority on compatibility, but there will be uh, listed support of utilising third parties such as WD, Seagate and more, but you will be presented um, probably with details on screen, uh, uh, either a warning or at the very least a message saying that you are using drives that aren't quite the tippity top that you could be using right now in terms of support and compatibility there. Again, when you head over to the compatibility pages of things like the RS422 and the 1522, things have changed since launch and a lot more drives are listed on there. But still nonetheless, you do still get the feeling that Synology systems tend to give you the most of what Synology promises from their systems if you use their own Synology branded drives, those Toshiba MG series drives uh, with Synology firmware there on board. And that's really it. This is everything we know currently in terms of hardware about the DS923+. Plus. It is a NAS that I do believe is going to split opinion. I'm not going to say it's a bad NAS because even if it's mostly like the DS1522+, Plus, which is a good NAS, it means it's going to be a decent little box when it arrives. It's just how many of the people that were either thinking about buying this and chose not to and wanted to wait for this are still going to be happy, or those users that were already in the Synology ecosystem and that were holding out for a great new uh, graphic-enabled media box are going to look at this and maybe take a step back. We'll have to wait and see. But do check out the articles in the description to everything we know about this box, and we'll be updating that article regularly as soon as we know more, as well as other Synology 2022 and 2023 hardware releases detailed in that article. You can subscribe to it. Just chuck your email in. We're not going to do anything else with it. It just lets you know and we've added more to it. Click like if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe to learn more. I know this has been a long one, but there's been a lot of information to cover here. So do let me know what you guys think in the comments. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.